these tokens are nuts. Only shooting stars break the mold. Hello everybody and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian and today I'm revisiting one of my favorite decks, Chatterfang, Squirtle General, featuring incredible new art from Bloomborough. Now Chatterfang himself is actually not from Bloomborough, but he was a reimagined creature as part of the commander cards and also he plays very nicely with many of the new cards from bloomborough and modern horizons 3. this is a huge update to this deck this deck went from a good deck to an even better deck because we have cards like marionette apprentice which make tokens and drain our opponents we even have cards like insidious roots in this deck to tap our squirrels for mana and even more ways to buff our squirrels with things like Camellia. Scavenger's Talent also gets us a token when we kill our own creatures, which is exactly what we do when we're playing with Chatterfang. Chatterfang is a tokens aristocrat stack in Golgari colors, which is really cool because there's not a lot of other cards that are doing this. Chatterfang, whenever you would make a token, also makes that many squirrels. So if you are making, say, a food token, you also get a squirrel token. If you're making five I don't know, forest dryads, you're also making five squirrel tokens. And then you can sacrifice those tokens to kill creatures, or I guess make them a little stronger at the cost of their toughness. That means you have removal, tokens, and everything else all on your commander. The commander also has forest walk, which means it can't be blocked if your opponent controls a forest, which is relevant very often because green is very popular in Brawl. In this deck, we're doing all of the blood artist style strategies, draining our opponent's life. We have a bunch of removal that's just kind of, hey, we're in black and we're in green. And we have the things that make a token every turn, like Bitter Blossom, Lord Skitter, Black Market Connections, and the Ophiomancer. But I guess only if you have a way to sacrifice your snakes. This deck also can go wide. Maybe you don't want to sacrifice your squirrels. You may as well make them bigger and unblockable using something like Champion of Lamholt or Chitter's Fitter to make your squirrels grow. We also have a bunch of Planeswalkers in this deck that give us more tokens, also usually acting as removal or ending the game on the spot. Nissa and Craterhoof Behemoth can reward you for having a ton of tokens by just giving them plus X plus X and trample so you can trample over your opponent. So let's take Chatterfang into the queue and see if we can get nutty with these squirrels. Roxanne, Starfall, Savant. Roxanne is going to be throwing rocks at our creatures and also at our face. That gives them more mana and it also just kind of takes out any of our beautiful little critters. Oh, it's so sad. She's so good at murdering them. I expect them to have either early game removal, things like a braid and lightning bolts, or just early game ramp, because the faster you can get Roxanne out and maybe even give her haste, the more damage and ramp you can do, especially because Roxanne triggers on both enter the battlefield and attack. Now, why does she do that? I have no idea. It's really good. She's really good. This is like one of the Gruul commanders that I, I will recommend if you just want a strong, strong card to play with. I'm gonna try playing White of the Reliquary here because I would also like to ramp. But if they have those, the Braids, Lightning Bolts, Lightning Strikes, things like that, they might kill it. Ah, it's alive! <gasps> Look at that! It's alive! Please just like let me sacrifice things. Yes, yes, this is fine. So they want this to die so it gets the treasures. Uh, I don't want it to die because I, I don't want them to get the treasures because then Broxanne comes out next turn. So I'm just going to pass. If they attack in with it, though, I, I'm happy to block and, like, maybe even sacrifice the Woe Strider here. All right, that's more ramp. Nissa. I could destroy Nissa with the pylon, but they'll have enough mana for Roxanne then. Ooh, I could have a bunch of mana for whatever the heck here. Three mana up. And they got a Lanor Elves off Nissa's second landfall trigger. Cool elf. Okay, that is a lightning bolt. So I am going to sacrifice the goat. 
grab a nice non-basic land here. Maybe the surveil land. Colony Garden's kind of fun. Let's go for the surveil land. That is a land on top of the deck. Not really what I want. And then I'll sacrifice this. Okay, that's more land. For a scry. I don't have, like, the infinite pieces. And since I already have enough mana here, I'll just put that into the graveyard. Actually, let's go for Polluted Delta. I'm just gonna grab a basic swamp. A swamp. Gallagreeters. It's a Chatterfang. Tatterfang is going to be seen. We're going to make a treasure token. And a treasure token means that we're going to go for gaining two life. I'm not putting the plus one, plus one counter on Gallant Greeters because I think they're just going to hit it with Roxanne. The fact that she also makes the treasures tap for more mana is so ridiculous. She, she makes it so any artifact token taps for twice as much mana. Which? Why? Oh, okay. Actually, they they didn't hit that. I wonder if they have a haste enabler. Nope. Just gonna sacrifice, like, three treasures for uh, an ancient copper dragon. If this hits, it makes between one and twenty treasures. Which is regular and normal and normal and regular. <laughs> it's so scary. He makes so many! So because this triggers each turn, you can only choose each, like, type of trigger once a turn. They must have a flare. Um... The red one? Hmm. I think if I have a good move here, pricing this, doing the pile on. I just, I don't have enough black sources to do it all. So like, untap this, tap again. Uh, I can make a flying blocker, though. Alright, Roxanne, where are you throwing your rock? At this, specifically this squirrel token. Force of Vigor to destroy this. Okay. And I will... Tap, tap, tap! Agadim's Awakening and Land War Waste. I think I want Agadim's Awakening, though. And I'm going to block Roxanne. Move my commander to the command zone? No! And we'll do this. 4x equals 1, 2, 3! And I'm going to bring back Chatterfang and the White of the Reliquary. Sorry, Woe Strider. You, you can come out later. You, you can come out of the graveyard on your own. You don't even need my help. Getting some triple triggers. And I also have three squirrels here, which means that I can kill Nyssa. Or the elf. Hmm. Now I'm thinking about it.
it requires me killing my own Chatterfang to kill Nissa. So I'll just go for killing Llanowar Elf for now. I feel like my music stopped. Why did it stop? Start it again. There we go. I wonder how long it was off for. Heck, they got a fetch land! More Nissa mana. Enough Nissa mana that they can just play Roxanne and still have lots of mana left over from the meteorites. Oh, also, Blue Eyes, White Boy, thank you for the sub. Thank you so much for using your Prime sub. I know that was like four minutes ago. I'm a little late, but thank you for that. I was so engrossed in my squirrels. Goodbye, squirrel. Essica's chariot can duplicate the meteorite tokens. Care to attack? Hmm. I'll take three. Oh, hey, Liliana. Gotta decide which triggers I want to go for here. I'm gonna start by seeing if maybe they're interested in a trade. Can't make it big enough to kill the Essica's chariot. We're going to sacrifice to grab a land that actually makes a token for us, Colony Garden. Go for the chapped treasure because it gets us another squirrel. We sacrifice one, two squirrels to kill. Oh, it got guy. Like, excuse me? <laughs> They're just jittering around. I am enjoying some Bloomborough. No more kitten cat. Could go for Liliana or could go for Woe Strider here. For Liliana. We could minus. Kind of actually like the minus here. I'm going to plus instead, though. We've already gotten all those triggers. And I'll turn the two treasures into one signet. Nice and wide. Panharmonicon. Oh no. Okay, so Panharmonicon is actually kind of very bad for me here. Already I was ready for them to be able to make two meteorites. But now they're going to be making two meteorites at each hit for four damage. Which means they could kill Liliana. Also have like all this beautiful, beautiful ramp. We'll see how they direct the damage. Okay, two on the token, we draw a card. Two 
Toodle Liliana. Next one. Who does Squile? Two there. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sacrifice that squirrel to bop that Elvish Mystic. And I'm going to kill the Essica's Chariot with the Gala Greeters, but I am not killing Roxanne because if she enters the battlefield, she will double trigger and make two rocks. And I don't want that. Why did Relic are getting kind of thick too? Make a zombie, which makes us a squirrel. Ooh, Chitter Spitter. Also making me squirrels. Uh, Woe Strider. I'll hit a bunch of, like, lands and spells that were not recurring. So now we can remove things at instant speed. So, like, I could wait until post-combat, like, right before Raxan's about to attack. We also have some card draw available upon sacrificing our many, many squirrels. All right, so we're going to go ahead and kill Roxanne. One, two, three. One, a two, a three. And now they have the eight damage again off the Panharmonicon with Roxanne being recast. But that's okay because eight doesn't kill me. Yeah, it can probably kill Liliana, but not me, not this turn. Mind me. Just looking for lands that have additional abilities. Ooh, that's a fun one. Hits face, too. Now, who are you hitting? Chatterfang and Chatterfang again. All right, I will sacrifice Chatterfang to the Woe Strider. Move it to command zone. I do not need a land. Oh look, getting lands. We know exactly what they have here. Uh, Panharmonicon, by the way, does not double land triggers. It's only artifacts and creatures. Uh, the client, I feel like making the squirrels into two twos isn't enough. Do I need this treasure? It's better with the marionette apprentice. Oh, hell yeah. All right, uh, Spring Heart Nantuko. So we can start with the Chatterfang. We're going to bestow our Woe Strider. Whoa. I will pay two, because that makes me a whole bunch more tokens. And then we have a Marionette Apprentice who's also going to make me some tokens. She's also going to drain our opponent whenever a, uh, Whenever one of these beautiful tokens leaves play. So I can like attack or I could just like, just, I could just like, I could just sacrifice everything. All right, so let's start with a, a one, a two, a three. Cause our woe strider lets us, uh, excuse me. I said it selected three, one, two, three, there we go. Out of the way lady. Great, love that. Swinging in. 
Doesn't matter how we sacrifice, as long as we do. Oh no, my Ghost Rider was blocked. And we'll sacrifice, so oh, I don't know, how about a goat token and the servo token? To win the game. GG. Flage, Titan of Fire's Fury. Something that's very tricky about Flage is that it enters the battlefield and deals three damage, gaining three life to any target, which kills my commander and most of the things that make tokens in my deck. This is actually an okay hand if I'm willing to name human on my Cavern of Souls. Uh, but because all of those things die to Flage and the various other burn spells and other good cards and Boros colors that they're probably playing in their deck, I'm gonna mulligan a look for something slightly different. Flage is typically not actually built that much around Flage. Maybe playing a few things that draw and discard to fill up the graveyard, extra fetch lands. But mostly, Flage is just going to be good cards in Boros colors. Because it, it works. Hello, yes. I'm a 1-1. One, one. Your, your cat's gonna hit me. Modern Horizons 3 had so many good cards for white. Oh, that's... Alright, they're, they're just straight up killing that squirrel. Hmm. I wanted a squirrel. Now they get to have two cats. So much better at making tokens than me. Hmm. As I said before, Chatterfang very just dies. Marionette Apprentice would at least get me a second blocker, but they just kill whatever the blocker is and take out the rest with Flage. So I'm going to go for Black Market Connections. They're going to get another Kitty Cat clone. A turn one Ocelot Pride is very hard to deal with. Come on, Meat Hook Massacre off the top. That's not a Meat Hook Massacre. Pay the six. That gets me parts. Sanguine brushstroke. I do not pay the one. Enjoy your card in hand. I'm actually going to just drop that uh, retrofitter foundry here. Try to find another land. There's a land comes in tapped. Flage. Is Flage gonna blast the token or the blood artist? Okay, hitting the blood artist. Hello, Ocelot Pride. Are you going to be, uh... You can't, yeah, you, you can't be made unblockable for the purposes of this, right? Because you can't choose colorless. Yeah, if this were, um, uh, one of the giver of runes, mother of runes, something like that, those, I believe, can all hit colorless. Oh, yeah, you. They still gained life this turn, though, so that happens. I'm still paying six. I'm desperate for stuff. Do not pay the one enjoy your card draw. You have many squirrels. Why does this start making two tokens and also cloning any other token? Why is Ocelot Pride like this? It's already so good as just a, if you gained life, make a token. But then it was like, mm, not enough. It should also have first strike, so it beats Ragavan. And itself have lifelink. Bye, Chatterfang. I actually thought that uh, Flage was in their graveyard. Apparently it wasn't.
Now it's in their graveyard. I pay the six. Approaching hoof mana. I have a nice wide board. Not as wide as theirs, but still pretty nice wide board. Do they have enough to escape? They don't. They can't escape Flage with the current cards in their graveyard. Discarding. Oh, they discarded another discard spell. Discarding even more. So yes, Blage can come out next turn, but as long as my Black Market Connections is out, I'm pretty sure we can hoof. We also have three colors since we have colorless as well. So they can't make that also at Pride unblockable. Hit him with the hoof. Hit him with the oof. Sometimes you just need a big finisher when you're going wide. Treasure token. So I want to keep myself out of bolt range because there's uh, always a chance. The hoof. The hoof. The hoof is on fire. Alright, we have ten creatures. We swing in with all of them but this wee little squirrel here. And we win! Always hard to get around that Ocelot Pride and the commander that kills our commander, but we got there. GG, Flage. Azusa, lost but seeking. This is a, I guess, just lands commander. She puts lots and lots of lands into play and then casts big green spells because you were able to put lots and lots of lands into play. I imagine there will also be turn one ramp because getting down an Azusa on turn two is kind of the best thing you can do. Uh, I'll bring out a Spring Heart Nantoko for myself, a nice landfall, make a token. Saw me on Commander at home, want to give me a follow? Well, welcome! It was a very, very fun game to record. Playing the Bloomboro precons. Alright, they've played their extra lands. Extra, extra. Eat all about it. Hmm. Kind of like just piling on and killing Azusa before she plays even more lands. They could just play her again, but at least that would slow her down a tiny bit. But also, Chatterfang. See how many lands they have left in hand. Because I don't think they maximized the number of lands they could play last turn. No, they did. All right, so now they're just going to keep looping a Ramunop. And this Terramorphic Expanse is going to expand and expand and expand. They can play it three times in a turn. At least I can kill you next turn. Oh boy, yep. Oh boy. Okay, that is a good card to see. I want, black, I want black mana. Fine, I'll take green mana. If you don't want to give me black mana, I'll take green mana. Something very convenient, though, is that they do have forests, and I have forest walk. I should have Crater Hoof Behemoth next turn.
I could have played it this turn, but I would have only had, um, I think, one attacker, because I would have had to sacrifice all the stuff first, making the things to make the things to make the thing to make the thing to make the thing. Uh, we are going to turn all of these insects now into squirrels, though. Actually, we, um... Soul Warden kills him? I don't think you know what Soul Warden does. Soul Warden lets me turn creature into creature. I can pay one life to get an additional one of these. And also a treasure. I can kill both of these, though. Which is what I'm planning on doing here. Yeah, as I said before, like, I could have made a very large number of squirrels and treasures. So I'm just getting some mana right now. Getting mana for hoof that way? Maybe. I don't think it was lethal, though. I don't think I had enough attackers. Maybe I did? I don't know. I'm just making sure I bank enough up. Great. And this way, I still am holding up the pylon in case of something like Kogla coming out and attacking one of my pieces. That's just Nyssa. In response to first Nyssa, Nyssa's first landfall, though, I'm gonna blast her. It doesn't really matter. They're all good. Portal mana is better than Fraxian mana. Mm hmm. Page Sun? Uh, sure. How about a land and a hoof? An adequate amount of damage. Huff is a great finisher for token stacks. The Revy Imperial Tactician. This is a bird that has no commander tax. When it hits you, it also untaps a permanent, which is really annoying because it's only three mana. And I don't want them to hit me with a bird. I guess you can also tap things. Yeah, I feel like you usually untap permanents though. The Revy is one of those commanders that I get they wanted to give a unique ability to something. But did it have to be I don't have a command tax? Did it have to be that? I don't really want to use up my goose mana. I'll get out the valley mite collar, which can hopefully grow and grow and grow as this game goes on. Two mana. How do you even build Derevi in Arena? Just bant good stuff? Maybe some of the mana rocks that tap for lots of mana? Oh, it's also an instant speed ability, so that's why I guess when you would be tapping things. Which 
you like to sacrifice your maelstrom wanderer? Okay. Linvala, Boromir, and Ledger Shredder. Linvala is the one that turns off the most of my deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pass through that. Basic creatures, untapping rocks into good stuff in second main. Yeah, because it's any creature. You can flash it in to make it so the other things untap. Like, they could flash in Derevi. Or play Derevi here, because they don't have four mana. They only have three. Play Derevi. Tap down the goose. Deal a damage. Untap. Cast another spell. Well, I'm just out here like... Gee, I sure wish I had a third land. I sure have three six drops. <laughs> Millennial calendar is alt win con. Oh, you could also do the um the strict haven sports game. Use up my mana to make a better bite caller. Are you holding priority? Why are you holding priority? Ha! Huh, it's a land, sort of! Yo! Land thing! Oh, I think they thought they had four mana and could bring out Derevi. No, they could have cast Derevi during their turn. Um, but unless they have four mana, don't have to worry about the flash. Suddenly there's a bird. It's also not like one or more on the creatures. Hmm. Legend Shredder. I want to cast a second spell, you're going to connive. Right, so here's Derevi. What do you tap? Okay. This will hit. They will get to untap one more thing. Sure, tell my cheddar phone. Uh-oh, I don't like you on top and that. You got swords? The plowshares? You have a forest. At least Chatterfang will be unblockable. <gasps> a land! Again, again, a land! Uh, sorcery speed. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Pop, pop. I can pay the one. I don't want to pay the one, but I can pay the one. Squirrel, 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 squirrel. That's why Valley Might Collar's in this deck. Cause it's cool! Alright, now I have the ability to kill Derevi. One, a two! Three, a crunch. The brainstorming. And if they bring the Revy out again, I can at least kill them, the Maelstrom, the Mausoleum? Maelstrom Wanderer? No, that's a different card. Mausoleum Wanderer. But because this can come out at instant speed to get the triggers to do the untaps, uh, ideally I would be blocking... Blocking and then sacrificing the food to get the mana to sacrifice the squirrel to kill the wanderer. 
Okay, Rodan is going to tax all three of the spells in my hand. Rude. Atomic prevents me from targeting... Targeting lands, right? Yeah. Rose got text. We don't have to worry about you. Just block. Ding dang birds. Okay, I just really want to land. Shields down. Lands up. That was not lands. Bless Chatterfang. It is for us walk. Yeah, so Drevi only costs two mana, I guess, because you can just like when it enters, immediately untap if you're if you're uh, casting it for its normal cost. But then otherwise, it's it's just three mana. You like put it into play, and it's like, oh, -da, I untapped the land. Yeah, why is Drevi? I've never actually had to play against a Drevi before, so it's one of those cards that's just like, huh? Choices are made. They are taking their time, deciding what to do. I have a feeling that it's time to not, not put Drevi in play. Ah, board wipe, maybe. Um. Okay. Tap the Chatterfang. Okay, tap the Might Caller. I think we're still good, though. I think I still have lethal. So we swing in with Chatterfang. We make a food. You have- they have something else. Sacrifice the two squirrels. Make Shatterfang have five power. What's a disallow? Not sure what the oops is for. I think I took the proper game actions to try to win. But sadly, couldn't get there. Nadu, winged wisdom. That's a very annoying commander. Nadu cares about, I guess, targeting your own creatures with spells and abilities. Because when you do, you reveal the top card of your deck. If it is a land, put it into play. And if it's not, it goes in your hand. Just pure card and mana advantage, especially because the cards do come in untapped. Ridiculous. Usually plays nicely with a lot of landfall stuff. I've got some landfall. Right here. Hey, this is the first Nadu I've seen really since the set came out. A bajuka the bog. Is it Nadu time? Taka. a tireless provisioner even if i had a kill spell there there's such a low chance of it actually working all right so octus can target nadu turning him into a blue artifact creature would you like to play your comedy of bamboo groves nope they're gonna target nadu again first you got a call of storm giants this time they draw and discard Please discard a big creature for me to steal. Well, that's just a counter spell. I don't want that. I don't want a counter spell. You're wondering why am I not going for Chatterfang here? The answer is I want to try to at least get rid of some of this and draw some cards. Sacrificing the treasure. Make them sacrifice either Nadu or Unctus. 
okay. I'm not I'm not targeting Nadu. Uh, they dropped the Nadu because it's so easy for them to replay him because they ramped so much. Hi, Nadu. Welcome back. You gonna pay two life? Yep, paying two life to get the Nadu trigger. Getting a land. And getting another land. You can't target yourself, right? Oh no, it can, it can target itself. Ringheart Nanteko gets them landfall, making more creatures, which means that they will always have more stuff to target. Since you can only do each one twice a turn. Oh no, only twice a turn! Another piece of indestructible. Meaning that Vraska and Fel the Profane are not going to be able to get rid of Nadu. Oh, and a counterspell too! And look, now they even have a blue mana for that counterspell. You, you got another one? Get a memory lapse and counterspell. Counterspell in here. Counterfang! Does it get countered? It goes on top of my deck. Oh, uh, sure, I'll put it on top of the, uh, on top of my deck. Or in Soul Trader. Now the thing I need to find is something that drains when my creatures die. Unless they just have lethal off Tyvar's stand, because... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... Okay, it's not there yet. Nadu is now blue. Blue and blinkable to reset the count. Utopia Sprawl to turn 1 mana into 1 mana. This turn might take a while. I'm gonna put on auto pass because right now it's holding priority from the uh, soul trader. And this might take a few minutes. Just you know, not do business. Mm-hmm. Some boots. At least they're down to seven life. I can only dream of a Nadu that kills themselves off Unctus. Oh, are they done? Take off auto pass. They're, they're trying to decide here. You, you know, you're gonna flex this guy. You want to attack? Loot? No, they're going to end step. Okay. Chatterfang, I did notice you have two blue mana up. Okay, yep, mana drain. That's fine. Decline. Reanimate. Landfall. Gets me a treasure. I'm gonna sacrifice this squirrel. To draw a card and get a treasure. Yeah, I can pay my life too. I can make all the mana I could ever want. I be sacrificing this Warren Soul Trader. If only I had a way to drain you. No, but I can try to kill I can try to kill Nadu. I don't think it'll get there though. And also, um, Sacrifice, like, the Morbid Opportunist. I'm gonna start with this Braska, and I'm gonna be plussing, sacrificing a treasure.
Okay, cool. Oh, here we go. I got, I got five more life to give. It's fine. Just gotta get to eight mana. Something, something. Life is a resource. And Crater Hoof Behemoth. We swing in. And because they have paid so much life with Unctus, it should be lethal. Yeah, block if you dare. Nadu! If they had a pact the negation, they would have pacted the Chatterfang. Well, the reanimate of the Chatterfang. They didn't. We're good. GG. Let's go. It's Glarb Calamity's Augur. I would really like to have a hand that has like more new cards in it. Springheart Nantico is awesome. Scoot Swarm is awesome. But I want to show off the cards from. Yeah, there we go. From Bloomboro, not just Modern Horizons. Camellia, admittedly, not that good with Chatterfang, but still cool with Chatterfang. What's up, Birds of Paradise? Oh, I should also mention what... No, 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 please don't make me drop my, my shoulders edict or my Camellia. Glarb cares about creatures. Or I guess just spells of mana value for a greater. Helga cares about creatures of mana value for a greater. I guess this one is a little bit more versatile. Well, that's cool. I have a Camellia. You can cast them off the top of your deck. You and tap to surveil and manipulate your top deck. Your favorite part is when they said it's glarbing time and then he glarbed all over the place. Kind of sad that the Springheart Nanteko didn't enchant the Birds of Paradise here. Glarb in the story, he's the like king of Fountainport, the ruler of Fountainport. Helga was was his apprentice at one point. Okay, Oracle, and we know they have Merit Lages Slumber. I guess they have a couple snow lands here. Sorry, Camellia. She's like, I wanted to buff those squirrels. I know you did. Yeah, sure, I'll use Takanuma. Give me something good. Ooh, White of the Reliquary. I can't play it this turn. That is very good. And I think I'll forage since I just have three lands in the graveyard. We are Chatterfanging. Spirit of the Alder Guard. That does cost four. Gets them a snow land. What if they'll, uh, yeah, they probably want to get Marriage Lage's slumber out first before they start trying to awaken Merit Lage. So then they get to scry. It's a ghost bear, it is a bear spirit. No, how many snow do they have? They have five snow. Yep. Forage, forage, forage. I wish she buffed herself on that. Ah, oh, here we go, another new card. Probably should hit this oracle. But also want to wanna. On one hand, I could. On the other hand, I don't feel like it. I 
I'm trying to decide here if I want to sacrifice Camellia. <laughs> if I sacrifice Camellia, killing the birds of paradise, then I get more tokens. I'm sorry, Camellia. Oh, but you get me more squirrels with the food. I just can't wait. In case they didn't get lands on top. Now they can't cast out Rins Epiphany. See, there was a reason for it. I didn't want them taking an extra turn. Save this food as a later snack. Maybe for the scavenger's talent. <gasps> Parallel lives. I want more tokens. So I'm going to sacrifice... Wait. You sacrifice one of these, the plant, to get a food and a couple squirrels. Well, I guess a couple squirrels and a couple food. I'm not going to bother looking for a fancy land because I'm impatient. One, two... I want to do this on the next turn. Do it in their upkeep. One, two. Use two squirrels to get two squirrels. And even more food. Camellia's like, I could have been eating that food. Sorry, Camellia. Had to stop an extra turn spell. You know how it is. Okay, well, n now they can just cast it, since they can play the land off the top of their deck. And they found one with Glarb. Should also be probably keeping an eye on Merit Lugia's slumber. I yeeted Camellia at the bird. <laughs> Sorry, Camellia. It's okay. We can bring Camellia back using Scavenger's Talent. If I sacrifice, uh, it's like four food. Three food, even. I just have to, like, level it up. Extra turn. Who among us doesn't want to be one with the Glarb? I'll kill one of these. And... I'll, I'll block the bear. I don't need all them squirrels. It is not a repeatable extra turn. No, I had to deal with a Tamiyo who cast Time Warp, I think, five times in one game earlier today. Oh, what fun that was. Oh, what fun that was. They're down to six life. Six life, not quite out of Merit Lage yet. All right, they can surveil again, manipulating the top of their deck, moving Undercity Sewers off the top of their deck, and getting Binding the Old Gods. So do you hit the Chatter Fang? Okay, that's fine. Zuzu lets you play extra lands off the top of your deck. if I just want to go for Camellia. It's the coolest thing I can do. What's the other card they have? Maybe a Terra Sunder? War to put it back in hand. Oh man. I mill. I get food. 
time I will get a, a techie land. Let's go Restless Cottage. And I'll play Scavenger's Talent again. Look at my beautiful nine food. And a food for a feast? As somebody who is also a scavenger, I agree! So sink into stupor, they can just, I guess, play that as a land. Assassin's Trophy, uh, they cannot play it. We're up to seven on Merit Lage's Slumber. No blocks. I don't care if they can get rid of it. I want to do it. I want this to happen. Even bolt this in. I can enter tap. But I do want the land. Alright. I want this one first. One, two, three. Hey, Camellia! Mill. Mill. And do I want to change that Assassin's Trophy? Alright, I'll mill the Assassin's Trophy. Okay, now it's just a shore up on top. Lovely. We've got lots of things we can forage with. Our food, among other things. Our food we can feast upon. They don't want Utopia Sprawl. They can't use it. They can't use the Utopia Sprawl. Okay, land they can move with the uh, Corsair Glarb or Azusa. They can also untap Glarb to activate him again. Yeah, Camellia's great in uh, in Igra. They work great together because you sacrifice food just by like everything is food. Oh, Bolus' Citadel! Yes, please! Wait, hold up. Okay. I can stop them from having either the Citadel or the Epiphany, but not both. Should I just eat the food? Eat the food. Nobody here needs a bluff. Mill the Citadel. And since they get priority, um... Oh, weather the storm. It's a storm card. Alright, so if they don't immediately cast this... Oh, weather the storm, actually, I get why they have that in there. Ah, because they're trying to do the, uh, Bolus of Citadel garbage. This deck can also run Bolus of Citadel. Camellia can go back into my hand. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and sacrifice a zombie here. Mill myself. Make a food. Make two food, actually. Get a land. This one! Bajookabog! I guess I could have bogged when the Sublime Epiphany was still in the graveyard, but I forgot. Am I going to build Sven the Relentless? Which rat is that? Card Sven the Relentless? I don't think I know that one. Are you sure that's what it's called? 
Vren! V-R-E-N. Oh, you wrote Sven. Maybe that was autocorrect. Uh, Vren the Rel Relentless, maybe? I think that's the Demir one, right? I don't know. I, I feel like Vren the Relentless is just kind of kill your opponent's stuff, but also you get Relentless Rats for free. I feel like I don't, I don't want more Rat Colony decks. I have so many. Is it going to flip? Oh, it's at nine. Well, at the beginning of their upkeep, maybe it'll flip. I don't know. It'd be cool. <gasps> the little death touching bugs. I will walk the bear. Hmm. Had a bang. Camellia. Eat the food, know myself, get stuff back. The toxic deluge could be pretty cute. Except I'm gonna have a blood artist in play. Since we sacrificed some food, Camellia is going to make a squirrel. Just keep milling myself. You can have a Tamiyo's whatever the heck. Alright, so I can just drain them here since we have 8, 9, 10. Yeah, alright, so we're going to end the game right here just in end step. Start with 4 on this bear. 1, 2, 3, 4. I love their scavenger's talents. Like, I'm a part of things too. Yay! Milling! We love milling ourselves. That rascal Chatterfang is about to do it again. I'm doing this in four, uh, or uh, three separate batches. Make sure we're killing enough of their stuff. More bits. Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. Blop, blop. And the final few. One, two, three. Hmm. Actually... One, two, three, four. Larb! Move my commander to command zone? Sure. Dang, why did Relquare get getting dummy thick? It's a big boy. Big boy who sees a lot of creatures in a graveyard. GG, Glarb. Tesa of the Ghost Council. This is actually a kind of similar commander to our own, though usually not as much of a sacrifice theme. It is a tokens theme. And normally I wouldn't keep a hand like this, but against Tesa, having something that can kill all those 1-1 one, one spirits, having something that can exile Tesa specifically at instant speed are all things that I want while they set up for terrible numbers of 1-1s one, that grow and grow and grow because Tesa has this permanent ability, a perpetual increase to her intensity, it's gonna get real big, real nasty. I'm gonna drop the Terra Sunder, maybe? Nah, the, the, the Terra Sunder can exile this indebted spirit. It reduces the number of spirits I have to deal with. Or, if they play a Artifact or Enchantment this turn, I can get rid of it. Perfect! This is card draw. We don't want you to have card draw. Card draw is against the rules. Um, I could have waited until the next turn, seeing if they like, I don't know, Dark Ritual into Tesa. 
But you wouldn't have a dark ritual, would you? Now you would have used it last turn. Another spirit. The Shrouded Shepherd. Might be indebted spirit extra big. So who would win? Ghosts or squirrels? Also, with the Meat Hook Massacre, Warren Soul Trader, and Chatterfang, if I have more life than my opponent, I can possibly win the game on the spot with it. Which would be cool. Not playing Chatterfang, because I need to be able to hit Tesa at instant speed. Mm, unless they're playing Radiant Destiny. Which Stony? This Tony. Hmm. I could let them go for it, but I don't have a great token brewer out here. Well, same thing as before. So they didn't get a fourth mana. There's the fourth. Somebody in the chat is asking for a commander, and I will remind folks if you would like to request a commander, you can do it in the comment section of Brawl Stars. This was the regular Meat Hook Massacre that also could gain life. Wouldn't that be neat? At least I think it would be neat. Hey there, Tata. Just have to survive this turn, and I think we can get going next turn if we don't die in the air, which is a big if. Alright. We have to play Chatterfang. Need her for X equals 1 to kill the Llanowar Elf. Squirrel. Gets me a treasure, which gets me a squirrel. Oh, we have to do it one at a time. Sorry. This is going to take a while. Do it once the other creatures enter next turn. Or we can target the thing that we're killing with itself. This has afterlife. They will get another spirit. Go. One by one. Slowly, slowly. There we go. Yeah, they see what's up. Losing one life at a time. GG. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. I hope you like seeing Chatterfang in action with all of the new cards from Modern Horizons 3 and Bloomborough. Uh, I also got to uh, include some cards that we didn't see here, like Oak Hollow Village, which can buff up all of your squirrels on the turn they enter. Uh, Patchwork Banner, which is just really sweet because it is a mana rock that also makes your commander and all other squirrels stronger. Patchwork Banner to me is kind of wild. This is an uncommon, and I could put it in almost any typo deck. This deck is hardly even a typo deck. It's really a tokens aristocrats deck more than anything else, but it works so well when you're spitting out 
dozens and dozens of squirrels. If you're looking for the deck list, it's in the description of the video. And if you'd like to suggest a commander for me to build, including some of the ones that were in the Imagine Critters or Bloomborough or Modern Horizon 3 or Outlaws of Thunder Junction, any of the recent sets, please let me know what you would like to see me build. There's a lot of commanders that I haven't gotten to from recent sets because they keep releasing so many magic cards. I actually can't keep up with the number of cards that are re releasing, especially because there are some decks like this one that are getting so much better and really do need updates so I can really let them show what they can do. Thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful day.